Welcome back to the channel, Team Cuss. How we doing? It's good to see y'all. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications. I'm gonna be dropping videos every Tuesday and Friday. So basically today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I practice. Keep it pretty simple. Let's go over a couple things. So get your horn out. Here we go. The main thing I wanna talk about is um, the things you should be doing every day when you practice. So fundamental type things. Before we get into like the notes, the other stuff, the solos, the jamming out, whatever you're doing, you gotta get the basic tremolo playing down. So that's what I wanna talk about today. Personally, I like to start with the butts. So get the melt piece, right? And just get a sound going through it, like just get get everything loose. Ready? So now match it to the horn. So let's play like B flat. So the next thing we can do is jump into long tones. Now these, these are really annoying. Um, I hate doing these, but they're super important for your sound. They're super important for trying to build the overall structure of your tremolo playing. So I highly recommend doing these every day. Just pick a note. Or just start on B flat and go all the way down. So here goes nothing. So that was okay. Normally, that's what people think you should do when you do long tones, but what you wanna do is you wanna get all the air out of your stomach. So what you wanna do is you wanna breathe in as, as much as you can and then let all the air out. So this is gonna be, this could be pretty long. This note could be pretty long. So let's try it, ready? And you just do that, you just keep going down, sorry. So that's the idea of that. I mean I can keep going, but you get the you get the idea. Um, really get that that air going. So next up we got major scales. So major scales are super important. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Um, super important for learning the instrument, learning all the notes, everything. So Make sure you know all your 12 major scales, no matter where you're at, super important. How I like to practice scales is so I'll start on C major, and I'll go up to C major, and then I'll come down with D flat major, and then I'll go up with D major, and then I'll go, go down with E flat major. And put on a metronome, work it up until you can get it to a speed that like really speaks. This is just 101, right? So let me show you. One, two, three. So 
once you're comfortable with that, you can get the tempo going even faster. When you really get it down, then put, put the tempo up. Don't worry about the tempo though. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you. One, two. I'm feeling like we can even go faster. I don't know. It'll be tough. One. One, two. Now I won't settle with that, like, I don't think that was super clean, but just work on getting the tempo, like if you're trying to work on faster playing, scales are like the best way to do that, and just working them up faster and faster and faster, just keep pushing yourself. So the next thing we're going to do is slurs. The best way to do slurs is to find the, the positions where you're playing these slurs like a lot. So a lot of people think the best way to do slurs is like But let's be honest, like how many times in a song or in a jazz tune or maybe in a classical tune, but how many times in a like a, a real song do you actually do that? It's pretty rare, unless you're playing classical, but if you're playing jazz, R&B, or anything else, rock, whatever, like, you're probably not doing that. So, I say do it in force. Um, so if you start on G. So, what you want to do is get, like, 50 to 100 clean ones. So what I mean by that is, tongue the first note, and then slur the second note, with only using your lips, slur the second note. And what you'll find is that you won't get that many clean ones. So you really wanna push yourself until you get as many clean ones as possible. It's just gonna help your overall control of the instrument. So, we'll try it. short you can also do them long but you know doing those super good because you're going to be you're going to be using those positions a lot you're going to be going from fourth to third g to c or g to um b things of that nature so you really want to practice the things that are as close to a real life situation i don't know how many times you're going to be playing like I mean, classical, but other than that, probably not. So, just something to keep in mind. And, and then go up an octave. So, if you're nailing these, it'll get way more, like for anyone who's advanced, take it up an octave.
find that's a lot harder to get control up there. You know, as you get higher up on the instrument, the control and the partials become a lot closer together. There's more partials when you get up higher. So it's a lot harder to nail the partials and really get them to sound clean. Lower, it's easier, actually. Um, unless you're like really, really low and like, you know, like if I were to play an A flat here. But even that's not that bad. Like, I'm talking about, you know, in here. It's pretty easy, you know. But when you get up higher, that's where practicing those partials comes in handy. Because if you're playing a lot of stuff up there, it's really, really easy to start clipping notes, notes not coming out, you know, getting notes. If people wonder why like certain notes don't come out and stuff, it's because they're not comfortable playing like that type of way. Yeah, overall, you wanna really focus on getting your tremolo playing there. It's not like keys or another instrument where you press the notes and the sound is just magically appears. Like no, like everything we have to make the we have to make the sound. We are responsible for creating the sound, so that's why getting your sound better and working on long tones and all those things to improve your sound, improve your technique is huge. And, and one, of my, my, one of my teachers always told me like, you know, work on your, you gotta work on your trombone playing. That's like your foundation and then go to the other stuff. But just work on your trombone playing. Play etudes, you know, melodious etudes, um, the Roshu book, and the Arvin Studies book. Those two books you, both, you guys should all own. You know, every trombone player should know those books. They're great. They have a bunch of exercises. The Melodious Etude, Etudes book just has a bunch of countless etudes that you can play over. And there's so many good things that you get out of those two books. But yeah, just, just play every day. Like, practice every day. Um, work on your fundamentals into like 30 minutes a day. Work on your other stuff for an hour. Or, or work on your fundamentals for an hour and work on other stuff for a half hour, whatever floats your boat, whatever your, your goal is or what you're trying to do, but it really starts with the trombone play. A lot of people want to jump and learn songs and learn all these crazy things, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna reach your potential if you don't have the base. It's like building a house without a foundation, it's just not gonna work. So, really get that foundation up on the horn before you move on other things. And I also want to talk about being a trombone player, being a brass player, like what it means. So like, you know, we don't have keys, especially trombone players, it's significantly, if anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying, it's significantly harder to play faster on trombone. It's significantly harder to play this instrument. Like you're, to make it sound good and clean, it's really, really hard to play. So all this tech technique stuff like you gotta put in the work more so than some of these other instruments like you can't play fast just by pressing keys fast and moving your fingers fast like you have to actually you know not only move the slide quickly but get all the articulations you know we don't have valves where you know the pitch is just gonna change by pressing valves necessarily like everything is controlled by the tongue and the way you tongue so Really just shedding that stuff, and like really getting into that stuff. Like do whatever works for you, practice the way you want to practice. But at the same time, make sure you're pushing yourself and getting better every day. Uh, if you're not getting better, you're wasting your time. And as for like how often you should practice, I think every day for 30 minutes. I mean, you tell me you don't have 30 minutes in a day. Like, come on now. So every day, 30 minutes, you should do this. As for how often you should like play your horn, it really depends on what you got going on. If you're busy, if you're traveling, if you're playing and all these different things and stuff, it may be tougher to get the hours in. You may be tired, your chops may be tired, whatever. But if you're just going to class every day or you just have a job or whatever, like, or even if not, whatever it is, if you have a lot of time in a day, you should make, make a serious effort to give it 30 minutes a day to an hour a day to just work on the fundamental side of things and then take an hour, another hour to work on other stuff that you want to work on. Every day when you practice, it's like going to the gym. 
you want to attack all the different aspects, all the different aspects of the instrument. If I were to go to the gym, I'm going to lift different body parts every day. I'm going to focus on different parts of my body. You don't have to do it that way, but I think it's most effective. Like, you should pick different things to focus on that you want to get better every day on the horn. And, you know, whether it's intonation, articulations, uh, playing faster, whatever it is, like pick a certain thing and really go all in on that for like the second half of the practice. But keep the fundamentals there. Practice those fundamentals. I hope all this helped. I'll see you guys in the next video.